SRP9001 is being evaluated in a comprehensive clinical development program. There are uh, four studies that uh, are being conducted to date, uh, but with plans to evaluate in a very broad patient population. Uh, SREPTA is committed to um, getting uh, not only this therapy, but all therapies. Our goal is to treat 100% of Duchenne patients. Um, the four studies that I mentioned include um, study 101, study 102, study 103, which is also known as Endeavor, as well as a phase three study known as Embark, or also 301. Um, that phase three study is a randomized placebo-controlled study um, that is fully enrolled. We've dosed uh, 126 patients as of September uh, 2022. Um, safety, protein expression, and functional outcomes are available for those first three studies that I mentioned. So again, study 101, study 102, and specifically cohort one from study 103, um, as well as there's data available for an integrated analysis of all three of those studies at the one-year time point. And so um, across all of those studies, we've seen robust uh, SRP9001 protein expression. Um, and the, the way that we um, assess that is through um, muscle biopsies. Those muscle biopsies are taken 12 weeks after that single IV gene uh, therapy dose administration, and we uh, measure pro protein expression by Western blot. Um, and then in terms of biological endpoints, there are, is other valuable information that we get from those biopsies, including um, we were able to confirm that the protein is, uh, the SRP9001 protein is present at the sarcolemma which is where it needs to be um, in order to do its function, which is stabilize the muscle cell membrane. And um, we also uh, determine vector genome copies, which uh, really confirms um, effective uh, transduction. In other words, delivering uh, the gene to the target cells. So we've seen uh, consistent results across all of those studies for the biological endpoints, also seen consistent studies um, across uh, the studies around um, functional endpoints. So we've seen improvements in physical function. And the primary endpoint that we evaluate for physical function is NSAA, or the North Star Ambulatory Assessment. Um, this is a 17 item scale. It's a validated tool that is used to assess motor function in ambulant individuals uh, with Duchenne. Um, and each of those 17 items is scored from zero to two. And so a zero, zero indicates that uh, the individual cannot perform the activity. A one indicates that the individual can perform the activity um, with modification. And a two uh, indicates that that individual can perform the activity normally. So the, the maximum score on the NSAA scale is 34. And that will help put into context as we say, give a, a summary of, of the clinical data. Um, I do mention that NSA is a primary endpoint uh, that we evaluate for functional outcomes. We also uh, uh, look at time function tests, um, such as time to rise, uh, as uh, well as the 10 meter walk run. But again, that NSA is the, the primary functional endpoint um, from the studies. And what we've uh, seen, I'll start with, with a study 103. Um, so this is a, a study in patients between the ages of four and seven, um, ambulant patients. Um, and this is particularly um, uh, specific to uh, cohort one. There are a number of cohorts in that study, but for cohort one, what we've seen at uh, one year is a mean difference between SRP9001 treated patients and a propensity weighted uh, um, external control cohort of about 4%, I'm sorry, four points on that NSAA uh, score. And so really what that means, you know, about one of the common questions that we get is what is that clinically meaningful? Um, and so when you think about that NSAA scale, what that means is that it, an individual uh, could potentially now in, um, and perform four of those activities normally where that required um, modification before, or it could, um, another example would be that the individual can now perform two of those activities that they could not um, perform at all. And so that really gives you some context as to the clinical meaningfulness of, of those, um, of those uh, NSAA improvements. Um, with study 102, the most recent data that uh, we uh, reported was uh, for uh, two years of patients that were treated um, 
in part one of the study. This is the first uh, double bind randomized placebo controlled study. And we now have up to two years of data and that those first patients that were treated with SRP9001, and again, showed in, uh, clinical improvement, statistically significant um, treatment difference uh, with respect to the NSAA, uh, a median uh, difference of, of five points. Uh, so now saying um, those in, uh, clinical changes or clinical improvements uh, at a two-year time point. And then for study 101, this was our proof of concept study, um, early study of, of four patients, again, an open label study um, that we now have up to four years of, of data on. And for those boys, again, looking at patients between the ages of four and seven, um, an ambulant patient population, um, we saw a mean um, change or treatment difference in the NSAA of 10 points when compared to the external uh, control cohort, which is a propensity weighted score uh, external control. And the significance of that uh, 101 data, that four-year uh, data that we have to date, is it really confirms the uh, durability of that clinical endpoint. Um, also, um, the studies to date that uh, we have conducted are in an ambulant patient population between the ages of four and seven. But here, four years later, these boys in the 101 study have um, are about nine years of age. And what we know from natural history, history is that these boys are predicted to be, would be predicted to be in a steep decline phase. And yet we're seeing this um, 10 point uh, difference on the NSAA. So we're very encouraged by uh, these results um, and uh, really excited about the potential opportunity of bringing this treatment to boys um, that need this therapy in the near future.